good morning i have just three cases to show today but i can assure you they are a little different from what we routinely see in our practice case one was a 40 year old female who had undergone an uncomplicated non drainage segmental buckle with an encerclage for inferior retinal detachment in 1998 she had a sketchy follow up until 2008 when she reported that she was doing fine except for a mild irritation and pain on and off her best corrected visual acuity at, in 2008 was 645 n36 basically because she had a demarcation line running through the fovea she had an inferior buccal exposure the retina was attached the fellow eye was normal she was advised buccal removal but she did not report for the same she came to us in 2012 when she complained of pain redness and a drop in vision of 1 month her visual acuity at this time was counting fingers at 1 meter and you see the buccal and suture exposure inferiorly and fundus showed a very hazy vitreous you see some exudates temporal to the macula you can faintly see the subretinal demarcation line through the fovea retina was attached and you had this large mound temporally with a secondary retinal detachment looking like an abscess in the lower part just the buccal effect was seen the ultrasound showed vitreous echoes and on the temporal side you see this retina elevated over the buccal you see the hyporeflective echoes of the buccal surrounded by variable reflective echoes and this is the area where there was no elevation here you just see the buckle with no specific abnormality around it we decided to get a ct scan which showed us soft tissue lesion surrounding the buckle here you see the encerclage here you see the buckle indent and this soft tissue mass was extending along the lateral rectus by now the patient was convinced she required surgery we removed the buckle the sutures as well as encircling band and you see in this area this blackish mark which was lying over the buccal surface the sclera underneath was all right the exposed buccal did not have any of this around it subsequently we sent the material for culture we sent this exudative material also for culture and it grew methicillin sensitive staph aureus and a few weeks later aspergillus teres patient was put on oral ciprofloxacin with topical fortified gentamicin drops based on sensitivity and once we got the fungal culture report she was put on oral fluconazole for 3 weeks 2 months post buccal removal her visual acuity had improved to 636 and 36 the eye was quiet a little bit of conjunctival scarring because of the loss of tissue here you see the clear vitreous cavity resolving hard exudates and the eye subsequently remained quiet until the last follow up a few months ago so endophthalmitis after scleral buckle is extremely rare there are possible routes intraoperatively at the time of surgery that include the site of subretinal fluid drainage the site of intraocular injection or an accidental needle perforation during suturing postoperatively the patient could have scleral necrosis or erosions We've seen now in this case that buccal infection can present as endophthalmitis and subretinal abscess and in most cases intra infection is secondary to the buccal infection due to toxins and not direct infection itself most cases are treated by removal of all buccal elements and appropriate antibiotics intravitreal injections and vitrectomy are most often not required and probably would only transfer the external infection into the eye Case number 2 is a 74 year old diabetic who also was a medical practitioner who came to our OPD with loss of vision in the left eye in pain of 15 days duration he had been admitted in the ICU for urinary tract infection and azotemia and his blood and urine cultures were positive for klebsiella during the course of admission he was diagnosed to have endogenous endophthalmitis he had already received an intravitreal ceftazidime and he had been put on topical steroids antibiotics and cycloplegics initially he was given iv monocef which is cefexin and then oral ceftum when he came to see us ocular fluids were not studied the right eye was normal there was no diabetic retinopathy the lens was clear the left eye had cataract vision was counting fingers close to face there was hypopion and posterior synecia the fundus view was very hazy and ultrasound 
showed plenty of vitreous exudates. You have this high reflective membrane and you have this lumpy subretinal elevation involving the choroid, suspicious of a subretinal abscess. An anterior chamber tap was done which showed pus cells and the possibility of acid fast granules which were later denied by the microbiologist. The patient was given an intravitreal vancomycin ceftazidime dexamethasone and we had to wait for physician clearance because his systemic condition was not good and the patient was not convinced he required surgery. His blood sugar when he saw us was 450 and he received three repeat antibiotic injections on alternate days, intravitreal injections pending clearance. The PCR of the AC tap showed a eubacterial genome positive. When he eventually got cleared for surgery after five days, he underwent a three-port pass planar lensectomy and vitrectomy. Intraoperatively, a large temporal retinal detachment extending to the disc was seen and a large yellowish subretinal abscess. There was a little bit of retinal necrosis and we did a retinotomy after cauterizing over the abscess. And the entire abscess was drained completely with a tapered extrusion needle and uh, suction from a syringe. Complete drainage was aided by perfluorocarbon liquid. Subsequently, we did endolaser to the retinotomy silicon oil tamponade. And we sent the vitreous aspirate and subretinal aspirate separately for smear culture in PCR. The immediate, culture, the immediate smear report showed no organisms in the vitreous aspirate. However, the subretinal aspirate showed gram-negative bacilli and again these doubtful acid fast granules. We gave an intravitreal ceftazidime and closed the case. Subsequently, vitreous aspirate was PCR was positive but culture there was no growth. And the subretinal abscess which showed gram-negative bacilli and acid fast granules, initial PCR showed MTB64 positive and IS6110 negative and this negative report suggested that there was no active uh, mycobacterial infection. The culture was positive for Rosiomonas mucosa. You see these mucoid secreting colonies. You see these mucoid-like colonies on the blood agar and the pink colonies on muller hinton agar plates, very typical of Rosiomonas mucosa. This was confirmed by DNA sequencing. Subsequently, culture for TB was negative. The patient was put on oral ciprofloxacin, 500 milligrams BD for one week as the uh, sensitivity report supported the use of ciprofloxacin. Topical antibiotics, cycloplegic and steroid, he was continued on antidiabetic medications. The chest physician initially saw him when we suspected TB and they started him on antibiotics but these were discontinued after the PCR and culture report was obtained. This was post-operative day five. The eye was congested, but you see this macular area is now clear, and you see the residual necrosis and hemorrhage in the area of the abscess. In between, he was hospitalized for an acute uh, myocardial infarction and had a stent. And post-op day 17, this was the picture. You see the fundus view is fairly clear. The abscess is beginning to get fibrosed. Intraocular pressure was 14 millimeters of mercury. Eight weeks postoperatively, his vision had improved to 360 and 36 with a pale disc. You see the attached retina scarring at the site of abscess, a little bit of traction here from the edge of the abscess site. So subretinal abscess in endogenous endophthalmitis is well known. However, its presence indicates a poor prognosis and rarely we do an internal drainage. Blood and ocular cultures rarely differ in endogenous endophthalmitis. However, in our case, the blood culture was Klebsiella and the subretinal aspirate grew something else. And Rosiomonas mucosa is known to cause catheter-related infections. Rarely